After you calibrate your display, the next step is to choose your color space. We're going to talk about lots of different color settings in the next few slides and they may seem similar or confusing. Uh, make sure that you take good notes on this section. It's also covered in your book. It's especially important because every file that you submit in Art1280 will have to abide by these settings. And if you set them properly, you'll be able to just automatically convert the images that you're opening to those settings so that you don't have to remember how to go back and change them. So choosing a color space in addition to a color mode, which we already talked about, like RGB or CMYK, when working in Photoshop is essentially important for color management. Choosing a color space limits the colors you're able to work with to the colors you'll be able to output with. So choose your color space and your color mode carefully. And so I would like you to change your color space to North American Prepress 2. Every file you submit through the semester should use this color space unless otherwise noted. You can change it by going to the Edit menu choose color settings and then you can choose on the settings drop down North American General Purpose 2. So if we bounce back to Photoshop, I still have that Edmonton flower image open, we can go to edit, color settings, instead of custom I want you to change it to North American Prepress 2. It will adjust the settings according to that preset and then you can select OK. The North American Prepress 2 setting that we're going to use is for commercial offset printing. Uh, the two things that we're going to talk about this semester are preparing images for web and images for print. And for us, we're going to prepare them for commercial offset printing. You can see that if I if I look at the settings that are the default settings for North American Prepress 2, the working spaces for RGB are going to be Adobe RGB, which is what I would like your RGB workspace to be. For CMYK, it's going to be US Web Coded SWOP Swap, which is a term we heard a few videos ago. It's a standard for commercial printing. And then there, there are some other settings that we'll talk about later in the semester, but you'll see if you're working with gray, it's going to have a 20% dot gain. And if you're using spot colors, it's going to assume 20% dot gain as well. Once you have these settings and you've selected OK, you can move on. The third step in color management is to synchronize your color space settings. And so it's important for your color space settings to be consistent throughout your workflow. Your workflow means if you're an InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop or if you open an image up on Thursday and then another image up on Saturday, you're working within the same kind of parameters or settings. So it is very common to start a design in Illustrator, work on part of it in Photoshop, and then compile it all together in InDesign because you're not just a Photoshop user when you're working in graphic arts. You're working with lots of different programs simultaneously, compiling things for final output. Settings can be synchronized individually or all at once through Adobe Bridge, which we'll talk about in Chapter 3. To do this, uh, you can, from Photoshop, choose File, Browse, and Bridge, or you can just open Adobe Bridge directly. If you're using the Creative Cloud, you must first install Adobe Bridge. It's one of the programs that comes with your Creative, Creative Cloud subscription. From Bridge, you can choose Edit, Color Settings. And then from the Color Settings dialog box, you can choose the correct settings and select to apply across all of your Adobe Creative Cloud applications. And if you do it through Bridge, whether you launch Bridge individually or you launch it through Photoshop, um, it will force your settings into all of your Adobe programs. And so you don't have to remember to do this every time you open up a file. But if you open up a file that doesn't have these settings, you'll get a prompt that says, wait, these settings are different. Would you like to change them? So I would like you to go and launch Bridge, and I would like you to change your settings for all of your Adobe programs. However, this is just a Photoshop class, so I'm not going to require it. I'm not going to dock you points anywhere if you don't do it. Um, you do have to do it in Photoshop, however, so you, we just did that earlier in this video.